Hey, hey, welcome back to the Conversion Clinic. In this video, I'm gonna show you the fast and easy way to do an SEO audit completely for free. Now, it's not the most optimal, but this will get you started. So all you need to do is open up this checklist that I have, and I've got some seven steps here. So we've got check obvious errors, check the metadata, hashtags. This will all make sense once I go through it. So let's go through the first one. What do we need to do for this? So you'll go over to Google and type in screaming frog and download this program. It's free, you can buy it as well, but I recommend the free version. Once you've downloaded it onto your computer, you can then open it up and it looks like this. It's a piece of software. So what you wanna do is use the website. It could be your own website or someone else's, whatever you're doing the audit on, and then paste it into the URL bar for the spider. So what's gonna happen now, it's gonna crawl the website and it's gonna find like any errors. It's gonna go through a lot of things in here to give you some insight in what you can fix straight away. And the way to do that is click on the little errors box here or the tab, and then you'll start to see some errors piling up, which are things that you can fix, okay? And this kind of tells you all of the things one by one, like, oh, there's multiple H2 tags. That's probably not a bad thing, but like if you've got H1 tags over 70 characters, you can go on the left-hand side of here and see which ones they are like oh this is over 70 characters i should fix that and then if you're wondering like why is that an issue um once you've selected that you can see why it is an issue it's saying why it's a problem and how to fix it right so this is a very um, like a really really great tool for any beginner to go through any seo issues with their website and then start to see some low-hanging fruit in terms of what they can fix and not all of these are made equal you might find a lot of issues here and you want to fix them all but don't stress if you, you you can't sometimes you can't fix everything okay just the quick wins like images over 100 kilobytes you want to keep them less than that i'm going to show you quickly how to do that and i left that off my list but yeah the first step is check any obvious errors in here and, and that might be more evident when we go through it. You might find that you've got multiple H1 tags and things like that, which is the next one. So we'll get to that straight away uh, after this one. So check metadata. The next tool I'm gonna introduce that I recommend you doing is uh, downloading this tool called SEO Meta in one click. It's an extension that you can get. You should be able to get it with Edge. I'm not sure if you can get it with Safari, but if you can, great. And what it does is when you go over to a website, uh, you can then click on the extension and then it will show you the meta title, the meta description. It'll show you how many H1 tags. So if it says two H1 tags, you know that's a big no-no and you've got to fix that because you're only allowed one H1 tag per page and things like that. And then you can go into the uh, headers area and have a look down here, okay, to see which of those H tags are structured that way. I uh, know I've got to fix this little bit there, um, but there's other quick to go to tools in here that will help. We'll go through GT metrics in a sec, um, but the rest of it, I, I don't use a lot of these tools, but feel free, it's an amazing tool. The whole thing about that is to quickly check your meta title and meta description, make sure that it's at least one, around 140 characters to 155 characters long. And this one has to be under 60 characters long, in my opinion. Otherwise it gets called what we call truncated, which it gets cut off on the search engines and it doesn't look as good as it should. So that's why they kind of tell you to do it within limits. So you might want to go through your website and have a look at some of the pages across there and notice that, hey, some of the meta titles aren't that great or the meta descriptions aren't that great. I've got to inject some keywords after doing some keyword research there and you know that's quick wins there so the check h tags should have been covered in here where you can check the structure of each page as it's structured h1 h2 h3 h4 and so on and that's just basically the way that your headlines are structured throughout this might be a headline and you might want to mark that as a h2 or a h3 but you might want to style it differently which is what i've done just here okay so you can manipulate pages however you want it for seo purposes but in the terms of doing a quick seo audit we'll move on to the next step checking alt text Text. So Screaming Frog can tell you what alt text is, text is missing. So this one here, there's alt text over 100 characters. So that's probably a big no-no for the 18 there. There's missing alt text on 10 images. It's telling us which 10 it's it's missing from and we've got to then write some alt text i've got a video on how to write your alt text in a few minutes with the scripts for ChatGPT. go check that out it's very easy so we'll continue on to the next step which i probably should move on to before the check page speed which is how do i optimize my images you might notice in here it tells you to optimize some images here and there uh where did, was that this one here so to to compress your images and so it's showing me these are all uh, webp or png files here and there and they're over the limits. What I personally do is I would download the image itself, like go to this URL, 
download it, then use a tool like tinypng to then compress it into a smaller size. So tinypng.com. And then I usually convert them into like WebP most of the time and compress them. If I still not cannot get it to the size that I want, I usually pull it into Figma and then I resize it in Figma, then restart the process, bring it into TinyPNG. Super easy, super simple to do. Okay, so the next step on here is check page speed. So what we need to do is open up a tool called GT Metrics. Again, it's free. You could sign up for a free account and then you can start to test different server locations. So what I mean by that is if you want to, if your server for your website is in Sydney, Australia, and your target audience live in Sydney or they live in Australia, right? That's probably the closest server that you're, you can reach with uh, hosting your website files. Then you might want to test the speed in that particular area, not in Europe. You wouldn't want to test it in Tokyo or whatever, because that will probably give you inflated metrics or different metrics. That's what's true for your audience. What you want to do is test it in the closest server to where your files are hosted. Mine are in Sydney. So that's why it's, uh, I would select that and I'd start the test. And the reason why I mentioned GT metrics is you do the exact same thing. You'd sign in, you test your website. I'm just going to test it here for the sake of, you know, doing this quickly. Yeah. You can select uh, Sydney, Australia as a test server after you've logged in. And so the reason why you'd want to do this is to see any problems with load time. It says performance grade 64, but if the load speed is one second 75 S I'm not worried about the uh, performance grade. Okay. I don't really care about that as long as it's really fast for my audience. Now scrolling down, I might see that there are some image size issues. Like it's 1.2 megabytes of images on that particular page that I've scanned. So I might want to go in there and make those images smaller. That's what's telling me there uh, with the script. I might have too much script installed on that page. So I might want to go through and look at my custom scripts for JavaScript or uh, CSS and things like that, or, or CSS is here, HTML is here. So it's probably more just JavaScript and see how I can shrink that down to make the, the page load a little bit faster. Okay. So these are all tools, this screaming frog, tiny PNG, GT metrics, all these kind of tools that I've shown you are very quick and free, easy ways to you know, scan your website for the usability to see how good it is for the user on the other end. Uh, and so it just gives you an understanding of what things you can fix straight away on your website, which is amazing. Okay. So let's move on. We'll go to check sitemap. So how you do that is you go to Google search console. If you don't have a Google search console, it would mean that your website won't get indexed by Google very easily. So you'll need to register for a free Google search console account. Once you do, you'll then try to verify that you own the website. So it'll tell you to put a little code snippet into your website or into your DNS records. And so from there, what you want to do, go to sitemaps and install your sitemap. They're very, very quick and easy instructions on how to do that. Personally, if you're stuck and you can't be bothered to find videos on YouTube, you could just chat GPT it and ask chat GPT, Hey, how do I install my site map? from Shopify to X and it will tell you. Okay. So use ChatGPT throughout the process because it just makes things super simple. Everything I've told you so far, and we'll get to that in a sec, but before we do, the reason you'd want to check your sitemaps here and there is to make sure that you compare the discovered pages that you have here on the sitemap versus the pages on your website in the back end of your website that you know are there. You might count 200 pages on your website, but the sitemap says 172. So you're like, Oh, that's weird. Why is that the case? So then you go dig into that more, see if you've installed the sitemap correctly, if you've got the right pages, etc. So uh, this tells you a lot of great information. The next step from here is check your CTR. So what I mean by that is if you go to the overview, you might find that you've got like stats here, but then you want to go to the search results. Okay. And the search results will tell you average CTR or click through rate. You'll have to check this depending on the pages that you have on your website. If you have a lot of what we call top of funnel pages in terms of you've got a lot of blog posts that educate people and it's not necessarily ones that are meant to like sell them on anything or whatever, or there's a lot of different uh, competitors out there with the same blog posts, then you're likely going to have a low CTR. There's a lot of competition out there, but let's say that you found that your CTR was a bit too low for comfort across your pages and that was um, not normal for your industry or what you were trying to target, then that would basically just tell you that you need to improve your meta titles and your meta descriptions. Now, sometimes Google will automatically rewrite it for you and serve a different meta title automatically and you don't have any choice in that matter, but sometimes you do have control over that and that's why it's very important to make sure you're 
Remember the titles have like numbers, sales psychology, I've got power words, I've got the exact keyword at the front, all this kind of stuff to make sure that you can win that click sooner. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do and putting the power back in your hands to make sure that you can get more clicks, get found sooner, all that kind of stuff. Let's go to the final thing. And this wasn't really, um, you know, this is a paid tool for G ChatGPT4, but I highly recommend it because it's gonna help you along the journey for everything that I've got here. So there's really cool stuff that you can do with ChatGPT in terms of like, let's say that you're with Screaming Frog. So let's say for example, uh, we've got uh, these page titles here and and you say that it's over 561 pixels, right? And you're like, I don't know how to fix that. What do I do? So you might say, take a screenshot of those, right? You take a screenshot and you might go over to ChatGPT, paste that into ChatGPT, and then say over here, um, write consistent page titles or blah, 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 blah. So say that we said that they're over 561 pixels, these, uh, titles are over 561 pixels and are too long. Please help me rewrite them in simple uh, bullet point or bullets, right? And it's gonna just take that and it's probably not gonna do the best job because I haven't trained this GPT in the way that I should probably train it, but at least it's gonna help you do little steps and things along the way that might help you out. Now, this isn't perfect, but you get the idea. You can help get take screenshots and then put them into ChatGPT based on the problem that you're having. Like you might not quite understand what this even means, missing size attributes or whatever it is. You just need to take a screenshot of that or copy this and then say, hey, I don't quite understand this. Can you help explain this to me in a simpler way so I understand or whatever it is. So ChatGPT is quite vital especially when you're getting into other elements like schema markup and things like that because that's quite important so I do recommend using ChatGPT along the way I provide a lot of free resources in that area especially if you're getting stuck on schema markup or meta titles and things like that I've got really simple videos on how to write those and giving you the scripts that you need in ChatGPT so that's pretty much everything that you need to know for a quick free audit and you know you don't have to pay for any of this stuff most of these tools are free I do recommend some paid tools like hrefs and semrush and things like that but for all intents and purposes like you only need these free tools to do quick health checks here and there to fix quick things on your website and that's more of the technical seo aspect and that's totally fine but this should at least get you a little bit further than when you started so i hope that was helpful if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and i'll see you in the next video thanks